BioBits are the true stories, challenges, and triumphs of global gems who have elevated themselves to success. These are real people, real stories. Hi, my name is Bert Oliva, and in this episode of BioBits, we're featuring Michelle Villalobos. Who is Michelle Villalobos? My name is Michelle Villalobos. I'm a professional speaker and I specialize in the topic of personal branding. So the way that a company brands itself like Coca-Cola or Ford, people can brand themselves. So they can put themselves out there into the world the way that they want the world to perceive them. So everybody really needs to learn how to present and promote themselves effectively to the right people for the right reasons. What are five words that best describe you? Five words to describe myself. Creative, passionate, energetic, intelligent, and driven. How did you get your start? You know, I followed this path that was kind of prescribed and periodically I would sort of meander off the path a little bit and I'd get pulled right back onto it. I got an MBA, I had a really good job, and I was miserable. I left my job to try another job, thinking, oh, this is the answer. And I got into that job and within a month I was still miserable. What was wrong was that I didn't want to have a boss anymore. So I went out on my own, I started my business, and I started to brand myself. Instead of sort of branding myself as a consultant with all this boring navy blue, black and white, I was like, oh, maybe I could bring a little color into this. And little by little, I created a brand for myself, branding other people. At the same time, I got an opportunity to speak, and I fell in love immediately. Once I said, okay, I want to speak, everything changed. And it was hard. It took a lot of years. <laughs> Who have been some of your mentors? Oh, I've had a lot of great mentors. One of my first was a woman who I worked with at an art gallery in Boston. And she's the first person that ever taught me how to sell. And then also, as crazy as it is to say, I would have to say Jerry Powers, the owner of Ocean Drive Magazine, the founder. Even though he didn't intend to be a mentor, he, I don't think he would ever have called himself a mentor. He ended up being one. I learned a lot from being around him and seeing his business that he built. And then of course, any number of the coaches that have supported me. My coach, Jody Johnson, I still talk to her every single week. My parents, and there's been a lot of them men and women alike. How do you best serve your clients? Who I serve are people who want to be stars. I help them do three major things. Number one, I help them develop the identity, their brand. What are they saying? What's their message to the world? And it also includes how they look. And then we get into phase two, which is developing from the identity, the influence. How are they going to take that identity and deploy it? And then step three, how to take that identity and that influence, how to monetize it and turn it into something that'll sustain you and allow you to bring your gifts to the world for a long time and have a wonderful life while you're doing it. What is the Woman Success Summit? So the Women's Success Summit is something that I founded after I went to an event where of 18 speakers, 17 of them were, were men. The topic was social media. And I knew at the time that plenty of women were in social media. There was no reason why 17 out of 18 speakers were men. And I just felt this urge and this compulsion to create an event to showcase women. So I bring in experts in a variety of fields. Every single time we have a different theme and then we give women, I say, the three things. Number one is the mindset, kind of getting them motivated and inspired to move forward. Then we do the strategies, how to market yourself, how to brand yourself. The third big piece is the connections among the women there. They, they connect with each other, they build things together, they partner. It's a magical event. What would your seven-year-old self tell you? My seven-year-old self would tell me, thank you, finally, for getting it, for waking up and giving me the life that I dreamed about. Because my seven-year-old self would have seen my 35-year-old self and would have been pissed off, basically. Like, what the hell are you doing with our life? Right? We had all these plans, we were gonna be famous, we were gonna have fun, we were gonna perform, we were gonna be creative. I had all these plans for us, and there you go, you sit yourself behind a desk for 12, 14, 16 hours a day, seven days a week, what were you thinking? So my seven-year-old self would be like, yeah, finally. Would you rather go bald or have a man's voice? Oh, ouch. I would rather have a man's voice. <laughs> My hair, my hair, my hair. When I was in second grade, I was eight years old. I will never forget this. My dad's blow dryer. It had a brush attached to it. So I would just run this thing through my hair every morning. And within a few months, I had burnt my hair to a crisp. There's no other way to put it. So she takes me into the hairdresser. She's like, what's wrong with my daughter's hair? And the woman's like, oh my God, her hair's burnt. She, my mom said, well, can you fix it? She said, no, we can only cut it off. They cut it to like boy cut. And I cried for weeks. 
because everybody thought I was a boy. That was traumatizing, so yeah, I'd rather have a man's voice. I can make that work. If your life was a movie, what would be the title? If my life were a movie, the title would be No Cartwheels in the House. When I was about seven or eight years old, I learned how to do cartwheels. I did them everywhere, and I drove my parents bonkers. I would do cartwheels wherever I could, and I remember one time I knocked over a lamp in the house and it shattered, and my dad, no mas cartwheels in la casa. No more cartwheels in the house. And I think that all the things that made me me also made me a real handful. For many years, I spent just trying to be smaller. It was always Michelle, keep it down. Michelle, be quiet. Michelle, you have to do cartwheels all the time. It was always Michelle, 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 Michelle. That defined a big chunk of my life until I woke up, until I realized that the things that I was trying to change about myself all my life were exactly the things that made me amazing and made me me. That's the message that I want to spread. What does the future hold for you? It's time for me to, to uproot myself and try something different. I'm gonna go on the road for a year and I'm gonna live and work on the road in 12 cities in 12 months. I'm gonna become totally virtual and I'm gonna continue to serve and in fact, I'm gonna be able to serve on a much broader level and identifying more superstars. There's a vision over here which sometimes doesn't seem compatible with reality. What do I have to do over here so that I can do this? That's the big transition for me, and that's really what I want to travel around the country talking about. Where are you living from? Are you living from your reality, or are you living from a vision? Because if you're living from your reality, your life is small. That's my mission, is to find those people who were like me, lost, knew that they wanted to be significant, and knew they wanted to give value to the world. I'm gonna find those people, and I'm gonna help them. I really hope you enjoyed this episode as much as we enjoyed making it for you. If you know of anyone that should be featured in one of our shows, please do not hesitate in contacting us. And please don't forget to subscribe, repost, forward, share, do whatever it is that you do to help us change the lives of over 100 million people in a positive way. I'll see you soon.